in the wild west. <laughs> <laughs> You have. <laughs> you little. <laughs> you little. Sh Hello again, and you join me in my shed. I've not uploaded for a while or a couple of weeks. I've got some projects on the boil. They'll come out in a later video. But I thought in the meantime, I'll bring you a video, or we'll show you a video, of a video call. One of my mates from YouTube. He's got a shed. Oh, he's got a workshop. And he's going to talk a little bit about it. Um, excuse my interviewing skills if you want to call it that but I thought I've got to start somewhere so this is number one in a series that I'm actually going to call Sheddies so anyone that's got a garden room, a workshop, a shed, a pub shed, a bar shed it doesn't have to be a shed, it could be a garage, a basement or whatever that they're using it as a specific space uh, or multiple of uh, uses uh, man cave for example then let me know as well because you, you might want to appear on this shed is and if you do uh, send me an email to weekendshedhead at yahoo.com yeah and I'll, and I'll let you know we'll probably put something together this guy you're about to see uh, lust for life a whirlwind of energy is a great guy I hope you like him um, excuse my interviewing skills I'm gonna get used to this but I'm sure you'll love the guy anyway this is the whirlwind mark right so mark the small workshop adventures you are number one on my well first episode on this series i don't know what i'm going to call it yet, Brilliant. but uh, Brilliant. it's going to be it's going to be called something like sheddies or something like that anybody that uh, has got a workshop a shed a games room a garden room a pub shed or whatever and you're number one i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, hello, Mark. How are you? Keeping well? I am well uh, as of today. Tomorrow, I have no idea. But <laughs> all right. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm good. I'm yeah. all right. Yeah, life is life is okay. Good. Super busy, but isn't that often the case? But exactly. yeah, I'm all good. But I actually <laughs> like being busy. So uh, I'm Mark in a good place is when he's busy. If I've got That's nothing right. to do, then I'm a little bit like a bear with a sore head and it all goes a little bit south. <laughs> That's right, yeah. And times fly when you're having fun or when you're working anyway. And you never oh, go to yeah. enough hours in the day. Well, just to, just to tell my subscribers and viewers here, um, I've been following Mark's channel now for what, what, how long you've been established? Is it about? I've six, been. I will be a year in November. So this no, yeah. So a couple of months shy. Uh, you know what? My two months shy, three months shy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah so you're you probably saw... close to that. I would say you've, you've certainly we've been and I've known of you for most of my YouTube career which is very short <laughs> yeah and i think i think it was probably sort of august time when i came july time last year i did a few videos a few years back but then i've sort of really got my teeth into it over the last yeah probably over the last year mm. time forbidding of course or time allowing should i say it's been uh yeah it's when finding time i work full time and so uh it, it's my uh hobby if you like and just to say, Mark, as well, I'll ask you a few questions along the way, but you can be as uh, full on as you like, or you can just sort of rein it in, whatever you want to tell um, people on my channel, that's great. So, awesome. Good, good. And I was going to say, uh, to start off, I've got a few questions for you anyway, but one of the one of the things that really appealed to me was the fact you've got a small shed or a small workshop. Uh, the name implies the Small Workshop Adventures. And uh, how, yeah. how you cope on making things from, from that tiny place always appeals. And I know I've got some subscribers who have got uh, similar sort of size shops or uh, looking to build from scratch. And it's just to say that anybody can start somewhere and, uh, and whatever size workshop you've got is uh, better than nothing. Yeah, I don't know if you want to have a quick walk. Have you, you're on a mobile, aren't you? So you can walk around. Yes, and, I can. You know, I can move it around and go wherever you want. I mean, it, as the name implies, the small workshop adventures, it's small. <laughs> so, <laughs> but out of small, the small, mighty oaks, out of, what is, what is the saying? Uh, out of, out uh, of, uh, small, yeah. small seed. Well, or, acorns, small acorns, acorns or whatever, mighty oaks grow. Well, <laughs> this is a very small workshop, and out of this, a lot of big things come out of it. So you can do, as we'll, we'll touch on in this, this sort of uh, 
catch up an interview or whatever it is and talk. whatever it is it's waffle in it i mean it's just yeah. too close, <laughs> it? it's just talking and chewing the fat <laughs> absolutely brilliant absolutely. There's, one, there's one thing you have got which is um because if you've got longer pieces of timber and wood you've got like a pull out piece haven't you near the doorway yes. you can well, I can show you that because it's uh, obviously the way I did. I, I when I built this, when yeah. I built this, which is uh, a couple of years ago now, I had to really think how the workshop itself would work with me. Of course, rather than it just being a workshop, I had to think how also that would actually work to every part of it. So I've had to really think creatively about every space and actually from my very first video which was the workshop tour it now looks quite different so anyone who looks at my actual son i've not done a workshop tour again and uh, but people see it but i've not actually did dedicated and maybe it's time on the year maybe in november i might actually do a, a, an update on on a workshop tour so it is yeah. oh essentially it's still the same but mm -hmm. obviously i've added and it's grown and i've had to rethink all the spaces so yeah. You, you were talking you just mentioned about big pieces of timber um mm. the first thing i designed was the bench when i built it because i built the workshop um from scratch from the ground up uh, whether you can see this i'm gonna actually the uh, can you see that oh no yeah, hang on a minute. Yeah, i need to good. turn the, the video around um good. hang on a second you're i'm going the wrong way i need to work out how i'm doing this here we go right right we are. can you see the bench yeah now is it absolutely in line with the door it looks like it <laughs> yeah i've got a, yeah there you go yes the vice which is proud of the door so anything in the vice goes straight out the door so when i've got big bits of timber or big lengths i can put it in my vice and it can go straight out so i designed my bench with that recess there that wall there yeah but actually then everything can go out so that's just yeah. one of very many design aspects of the workshop that makes it work so then i'm not restricted um essentially i can cut it i can work on what i'm building and then i can bring it in the workshop yeah well, and exactly and this is goes to show that sometimes a bit of planning before you build a workshop or a shed absolutely think about what you're actually going to do in there um because it's easier to do it once rather than twice and redo work so if you can think ahead as best you can it's yes. always uh the, always the a other good thing idea. i did build which is um i have everything is on casters so i'm just switching it again so you can see my uh my uh my just my you know my uh mitre saw my under mm -hmm. there so it's, it's 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 all it collapses in on itself to live under the bench so it's on a big uh -huh. steel bar so I, it's on casters. There you go, zooming in on the casters. Yeah. And I pull that out. Now, when I pull it out and I set it up, it is exactly the same height as the bench. Perfect. So when so I rest anything. So all my tools, everything I've built in here. So then the bench itself becomes an extra. Yeah. Yeah. You know. A table for whatever I'm working with because it's exactly the same height. And is that on a hinge then? Is it so that lifts up? That yes. Uh, if I get that out, yeah, I can show you it. Uh, well, you don't think it's going to be a struggle. In. If it's going to be a Pardon? struggle, if it's going to be a struggle, don't worry. But if not you, really. You... I just need to position the phone, my camera, so you can see it. So me pull it out. So well, you're, you're will... telling me you haven't got a cameraman? No, yeah, I haven't today. Uh, let me see. Can you see? Can you see the saw down there in the corner? Can yes, I can. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. So, just move the bin liner. Ah, yes. Which it comes out. So, you, have you, are you still with me on the camera? We're with you. Uh, yeah. And then it hinges up. <laughs> awesome over centre catches. Yeah. And just in that, it's in full working order. Get on the catches. Perfect. Doing it cack handed. There we go. Hey, it's up. It's up. It's and on. it's ready. Plug it in, spin it around, go wherever I want. I go this way, this way, this way. I'm doing a bit of strictly dance, drunk, come yeah. dancing with me. Uh, <laughs> with me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
That's about as good dancing as you get in this. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you can dance in there. There's enough room to uh, at least we can. Absolutely. <laughs> so is that, that going to bar going? Is that going to bar going through then? Is it rather than a heat? Yes, I, I'll yeah. show you at the back. I've never showed this actually. I'll spin the, Ooh, uh, the camera around. Do you see the? Ah uh, yes. Yeah, it's a, bit it's bar, a really it? it's a 22 millimeter steel bar threaded yeah. threaded because obviously you've got your bolts on the end oh. both sides so it locks locking nuts no, like nuts yeah all there supported underneath like that and the whole thing just a really simple four by two frame on casters and, Solid it, and rock. it just pivots underneath so that it can disappear underneath the bench solid and so, have you got anything else on casters then, or is that the? Yes, but I, I don't get, well, this. Don't worry about getting them out. Is, yeah, no, I'm not going to get this out because it's actually disappeared at the minute. So, just spinning right. the camera around again, you can see this. This is actually for my table saw, but it's not here. <laughs> right. Okay. So my table saw lives there, and uh, and it's on casters. And again, that is that that whole caster and construction for the table to sort of sit on once yeah. it's up once it's sitting on there is exactly the same height as the bench again thinking ahead yeah yeah so everything is at that height so everything works for everything um, yeah i mean you, you lose bits of timber in the bottom there as a bit of a yeah story. that's me bin i mean I've, I, you, you go through that and then i chuck you know and i've just just recently chucked out a load of stuff because you get overrun with bits of timber don't you especially yeah if you're busy. Well, i've got I've got bagfuls of it. I'm, I'm putting it yeah. in soon, and it's. I've gonna, just given yeah. a. I've just put a load out the front for a mate who's who's got a fire. I've got a fire as well, a log, a log, you know, a, a fire pit. But I've just yeah. had too much, and it's like, come and grab some. And he said, yes, please. Yeah, yeah, perfect. So that what's that swinging out thing I've seen before? It swings out from your door. Right. Yes. Um, right now, that is. I'm going to turn my camera around again. Is only oh, you can see it there. It's here. Yeah. It's a gate. It's hinged on the door. So that is, if I'm working on my own, uh, what I'd have to do is move my bandsaw out. So you'll have to sort of cool. go, a little bit go with me on that one. But what it does, you yeah. can see the hinges. It's on two hinges there at the bottom and at the top. And it comes out. And again, it's exactly the same level as all the, the, the saws and the bench. Yeah, so it's, it's basically so another word. It, so another I word can word. have support out there going out, and it becomes that extra man if there's no, if I'm not, I'm working on my own, which often I am in my workshop. But although well, increasingly well. less these days, I have uh, I have uh, people working with me now because I'm quite, quite busy. That's but good. but these are brilliant. Um, it's just uh, put that on the door, swings round, supports, it's solid. It does and the it's job. Got, it's another track. It does the job. It's, it's, it's about work again. Or it. And I just worked out what height for my height. Again, I had to think, well, what's it? Because you can think, what, what, what size height a bench? Well, I'm six foot one. Uh, I've mm -hmm. shrunk a bit. I'm six foot one mm -hmm. tall. So I, I built the bench for me. Mm -hmm. you, exactly what I did. Five foot ten, you'd build the bench for your height. Yeah, and then exactly you'd build right. everything at that. So these, these things on casters arguably maybe would be a little bit smaller so the dimensions the height is sort of it's very custom or custom uh, customized it's sure. about how tall is your how high is the perfect height mm. for you working at mm. there is a, there is a rule of thumb but again I, I still don't believe in that because it's whatever you feel comfortable at i mean if you can trial different heights of workbench before you build it before i mean you feel you... comfortable with i mean if yeah, i stand, you... stand at mine now i'm probably yeah, it's probably about four inches from a belly button, I suppose, and that's that's perfect for me. Um, yeah. But again, I mean, people generally say, uh, you know, a kitchen worktop height. Mm. You know, you do sort of the optimum, but this is just a little bit taller because I just wanted to make it just right yeah, for me. Right for you. My workshop. So, what size is your shed, Mark? I mean, it I know is. it's triangular, or is it triangular, or is it? No, uh... it is, it's an odd shape. It's not strictly triangular. It's actually got five sides to it. Oh right, okay. Excellent. So uh, it, it's uh, it's three meters this way. Yeah. Okay. At the top here, it's about the bottom at the at the door end. You again, you're you're about three and a half meters. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. And then this wall here behind you, again, I'll spin it, which is the back wall. That's only about a meter, just over a meter. And then it goes from a meter out to three, three and a half meters in that corner. And then it comes yeah. back at a slight angle to, to the front edge, which is behind here. And then Not comes yet. this way. So you only, you know, at its biggest, I'm um, three by three. But at this end, it's only about a metre, and a meet, just under a metre and a half wide. It, it's like a square, but with a wedge taken out of one corner then, I suppose. Absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And and the that, reason for that, oh, yeah, uh, I, was I can't to... show you, is, is my garden perimeter goes, so that's my fence going at that angle along the back of the... Uh... Got you. So, so you, that's you why I had no choice but to build it in that shape because it's literally it's it's you know i'm I'm talking you know i don't know 100 mil 50 yeah. mil 50 mil from the actual fence yeah i've got you i've got you yeah yeah brilliant so that's why it's every space, space. So it's maximizing the space that i was in rather than which is, is you know i'm building sheds and i'm building things for people and i yeah in an ideal world and i always try to have space around everywhere so it makes it easier to build but i can i do know how to build from the outside in yeah, yeah. rather than building it and then building it and slowly working and building it on into the outside until you finish it so yeah. you have to build it from the outside in on certain walls to be able to be able to do that exactly and it sort of brings me on to actually um you've um not long put a, built a garden room and that was a very irregular shape, would you say? Yes, it was. It was another one. It was a, a neighbour who lives about four doors, three or four doors down there. So he was he's, a, he's actually a good mate. And uh, there's nothing like putting your friendship at test when he's yeah. spending a lot of money with you. Yes, that's right. So and your skills it was, at it's test. It's arguably the most pressured job I've ever done because he was spending lots of thousands of pounds. And he'll probably realise that as well. <laughs> so it's a mutual thing, I think. I think it's. Uh, yes, it was. I it's... guess so. And we're yeah. still good mates. I mean, we're out for dinner tomorrow night at the pub. So uh, oh, you know, him right. and his and, and and my wife and his wife are, uh, are best mates. So oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. That's so good. it had to go well, otherwise it was going to go really <laughs> bad. <laughs> you had to be confident in your skills then. I it's had to be confident that I could build it. Build it. <laughs> <laughs> and, if, and if anyone's watching as well that uh, wants to have a look at go on to mark's channel i'll put his link but uh, to his channel by the way and you've done about four episodes on that garden build i think is it four episodes four, i think it's about four episodes some of them are quite long and then there is a, a complete time lapse which i do the whole thing from mm. from putting the spade in the ground to the finish in about five minutes yeah the, over over a time lapse so i mean yeah, I sort yeah, of separated your... a lot of the time lapses and picked what I wanted and, and you know, pushed the whole build from there to finish in five minutes. So that's one of the videos. But the long, extensive build, each each episode's around 20-odd minutes because yeah. I was building over – it took me 30 working days. Right, okay. So, so, uh, so and I did – and some some weeks I did four days a week. Some weeks I did three days a week. Mm, maybe some mm. i did a five day week but mm, mm. so but actual working days 30 so but that that actually was spread over about eight weeks mm -hmm. and your background as well mark what, what, what brought you into woodwork especially i mean i know that's your passion yes. is, that, is that the right word passion would you say yeah or? no well, yeah i love it um yeah. but originally what got me into it is is, is is many many moons ago when i was uh when i left school i joined the family business and uh and that was uh cabinet making carpentry a furniture wow. manufacturing company wow. so i left school I, I left school and the very next day i started i knew i was gonna i knew what i was gonna do because the, the job was it was sort of expected you just went into the family business course, uh, yeah. quite a big furniture manufacturing company in uh in bedfordshire in the uk and it was called danta pine uh -huh. um it was a family business run by my dad, uh, set up originally by my dad and my granddad. And then uh, my uncles came in on it as well. And then there was lots of men that were employed and mm -hmm. it was factory and we had shops and we, and we, and I, I built, you know, hundreds into thousands of pieces of furniture and kitchens back in the eighties and, mm -hmm. and to the nineties. So, but 
I that wasn't my passion at that mm. point. I, I was doing it, and I never. But so I didn't stay with it, and I left to follow my passion, which was actually to become a professional musician, and I did achieve that. So um, I had quite a successful career um, in that until a big life event happened for me uh, that changed everything. But uh, and then coming back to woodwork, it was COVID, like lots of us, beginning of, of COVID. I'm sort of scratching around, thinking, well, you know, starting to think about life like lots of us had a lot of time to think certainly in those <laughs> early days of covid in 2020 mm. i started making things again mm -hmm. and i found myself in a really happy place thinking oh I'm, I'm i'm actually really enjoying this and it took me it's like you know, they say you know you you never forget to ride a bike don't you and it's sort of yeah, getting back yeah. on and the skills and i over a couple of months i just re it's, reconnected with skills that had laid dormant for mm. a number of decades because mm. i'd sort of left it behind mm. Mm. so i just connected with that and then i'm one day sitting there in my garden i had just a normal garden shed here just mm -hmm. a night before shed and uh all of a sudden light bulb moment i could build myself a workshop mm. well i know i can and and maybe i should mm. so i did <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what this is <laughs> and and from there you know i've gone back to being uh, a full-time carpenter and, and furniture maker so i'm building you know it's my full-time job again i left uh my job in uh in acute mental health uh which is what i have been doing for the last decade mm -hmm. uh, within dorset healthcare um mm -hmm. and i was working on the front line of uh, of, of mental health mm -hmm. and i left it and i was like oh, why didn't i do this years ago <laughs> yeah, yeah we big so relief yeah and you think yeah and and and, and now I'm, I'm yeah brilliant so now i'm back it. full time you know i have a, an order book uh, probably six weeks in front of me of, really? of people um and from and a that, standing that start happened, so how long have you been full time now then as a as a woodworker joiner in this um, year last this year really because i had my uh, i had a i had a hip replacement in december mm -hmm. uh, of last year mm -hmm. um so that sort of so it was really i i really i was dabbling i was i was doing things for people but knowing i was about to have a major operation mm -hmm. so i would say uh, so i was doing some jobs and i made some dining room i made a dining room table for somebody i mean which is insane the video is actually on there a big dining room table in a in a tiny little workshop i mean it was insane how i did but i did it yeah yeah think, sure. I mean, how did you make that and it was a specific way she wanted it, the customer wanted it and i started making some things but knowing i was about to have a major op and then but then while i was sitting you know in my bed literally re uh, re recovering from uh, a hip replacement mm -hmm. i was planning scheming <laughs> i was just there that's right like, your brain whirs away yeah and I'm and whirring away, like this is what i'm going to do right i'm going to do this and i just was like a bullet you know like a racing horse waiting to go yeah yeah and well, as soon as i was fit enough or started to get fit enough i was in here and then boom i was like that's it i'm out of the traps i'm gone again and, and anyone who knows me in real life yeah. knows i'm uh i'm a pretty uh <coughs> it comes across on your channel positive too. generally by nature very positive and uh <laughs> gregarious fun in mm -hmm. life yeah, i think that comes across in my videos i'm probably sometimes does. i'm it's even really larger than life in life <laughs> <laughs> but you do you put a lot of that down to the fact you're happy in your space in your workshop because i know you've in the past you've touched on well-being and mental health on your channel and yeah. um would you put that down to that space you have i mean a anyone that thinks it, a big part of it in this i mean again coming back to that covid thinking what am i going to do with my life i'm mm. 57 mm -hmm. um at the moment i was 57 in march my birthday last march and you know so when it was what was i 55 then wasn't i covid that's three two years or 56 so i'm, I'm doing my maths now when it was 2020 so no 50 55 yeah. yeah so i was i was in the i was in that summer and thinking about what do i want to do that's sustainable into my retirement years because i'm not the sort of person that can just I see that a lot i see that a lot on youtube retire, retire. And then go, what do yeah. i do now yeah what do i do now i'm at, i'm heading towards my retirement years but mm -hmm. i don't want to retire i want mm -hmm. to do something that that makes me want to get up in the morning mm -hmm. makes me feel passionate about life and and 
want to stay as young as I possibly can. So it was a big part of that. And then that that building this. And I thought, you know what? And as, as I was so happy, and I knew I had the skills to do it. I knew I had the, the carpentry skills and the woodworking skills and the cabinet making skills as well and combining all those. Yeah. So it was just a case of, OK, why not start a new career at 57? Why exactly. not? Who exactly. says you can't? I exactly. mean, people think, oh, you're too late and you've got to slow down. And it's like, no, you, the only time it's too late is when you stop breathing. Exactly. Exactly. Or you've, got, or you've got air in your lungs, you just keep on going. You've got on air going. in your lungs, follow your dreams, follow your heart. And, and, and age is no barrier. And I'm That's absolutely what? passionate about... Uh, particularly blokes, because so many blokes, who, you know, and that's where the mental health side comes into it, that it's, I'm quite passionate, because you don't have to give up. It's like, mm. you know, 57, 67, 77, it doesn't matter. Just, exactly. Just, I mean, it's, just, not, it's, it's not sometimes the fact that it's woodworking or it might be metal work, or it could be building a car or a kit car or a motorbike, whatever. It's the fact of actually doing something. And it's where that word comes in. A lot of people uh, distinguish themselves as a maker or something like that i mean a maker is so broad anyway i mean it could be from changing a light bulb to a rocket scientist anything anybody that's bringing two objects together to make something else which is usable or attractive or whatever to make them happy there's a lot to be said about it even if you're building a space for you to sit in and contemplate or to sit in and take stuff away yes. and, and yeah. this was my sort of thing about and when i built this shed it was only going to be a workshop and then i thought I could have my desk in there for when I work from home. And then I thought, hmm, it could have a cinema in there, or it could have a games room, or it could have this. Absolutely. And I thought, try crap. I mean, I'm fairly obsessive anyway. It comes to things like this, undecided or obsessive. So I sort of pushed it to the limit. Um, but things evolve. As long as you're keeping yourself busy, it, you, you, for me, it's the weekend work. So when I'm on a weekend, I know what I've got to get done that weekend, whether it's got to the point where I've got to uh, felt the roof or I'm putting new doors in or I'm building something else with a man cave shed. It just gives you something. I'm not retired, of course. I'm still working full-time, a very busy full-time job as well. Um, but I, I like to keep myself busy at the weekends, and this is what I like to do is to, to make yeah. it. And, and, and it sounds like the same as you. And, and you mentioned woodwork, but is there any other um, media you're thinking of getting into or – uh, metal um, work or, or well, I still teach. I still do teach, although in term time I teach in. I'm te I keep my hand in, so I I freelance. I'm a freelancer uh, with mm. a, a national company, and I teach into uh, national uh, basic national health trusts and and uh -huh. various trusts around and various professional bodies. I teach yeah. uh, mental health, uh, right. and I do that when once September starts. I'll be back doing that possibly once one one day a week. Oh, and I really? get paid quite nicely for doing that because it's uh, it's freelance and, uh, it's, That's your bread and uh, yeah, it's good. But it keeps me, you know, it keeps my passion alive in 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 mental health and stuff because right. I'm I think that's just it's just important I and mean, it's really important that we're able to just have conversations about it and it's yeah, and it be no big deal. That's the thing. We've we've we, for years it's always been health and particularly mental health was it was a big deal. But mm. we are all of that. Everybody has physical health and everybody, every human being on the planet has mental health. Mm -hmm. You have a brain and you mm. have feelings and emotions. Mm. Now, that mental health is either good or indifferent or not very good, depending on where you are in your life. And we go through seasons with that. Mm -hmm. And it's about how we just but it's about having those opening up those conversations. And blokes are terrible or embarrassed of having those conversations course, about that. Course, yeah. in it, and it's really become quite big in in professional sport and mm -hmm. people talking about it and being open about it and i yeah. thought why can't why can't we be talking about it in workshops and and mm -hmm. and why just having conversations i yeah. do happen to have some professional qualifications in it when we talk we find solutions to things that we didn't really know how to work out mm. you know uh, in it's, anything, the same it's, the same, it's the same with everything, isn't it? It's like sharing. It's like what we do on YouTube. We're sharing our ideas and thoughts on building something, I suppose. And it's the same with, like you're saying, well-being and mental health. And you're sharing experiences and practices yeah. and things. And I think that's why YouTube's such a great thing. It's, I mean, you can watch a video and you might have 5% of it where you've got an idea from that. You take it away and you, it evolves into something else. 
yeah, um, yeah. So I think it's a great platform, and anybody that's watching, it's a if you're on to Mark's channel, he's got a. I think you've got a series on uh, well-being. Yeah, you? it's woodworking and well-being, and I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm I haven't done one now for about three weeks because just because I've been so busy. Of course, yeah. Uh, with, yeah. with actually doing paid, <laughs> yeah, <of laughs> customer course. jobs, which is, pays the bills. It keeps, and with the cost of living crisis that we're all living oh, through, we talk about we've that, got yeah. to keep earning the money. So obviously that pays the bills, and I'm out there. You know, I'm working. You know. Um, like anybody, I'm I'm doing this, but it, you know, it, I take my work time and I, I, I laugh because I come also to spend some time in my life being a professional musician. Then I I came up with a phrase: I'm going on tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I used good. and I sort of said that in some of the earlier videos when I said, "Well, I'm now going to not be just in my workshop. I'm going to be on site." Yeah, so yeah. in my head, in my gigging head, yes, is, we've all lived. Everyone who's lived at our age has lived a life. Has yeah, got, had yeah. various things they've done, and you look back and go, oh, "I was doing that back in the twenty, thirties, forties, fifties, and yeah, so yeah. on." And when the and two so merge, I just said, "Oh, I'm going on, on tour." Yeah, yeah, exactly. When the two merge as well, it makes it a lot more sweeter, I suppose. And that's a question, yeah. actually. Uh, you're, you're a musician, woodworker. Have you made a guitar yet? Yeah? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> going, why not? I've got some very nice, expensive guitars. I call them legacy instruments from when I could have, I could justify having them. Now yeah. they just they're 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 very expensive uh, guitars and and gear. And uh, acoustic, I take it acoustic ones then as well, yeah. Uh, yeah, acoustic and electric and rigs, yeah. electric rigs and uh, all sorts. I used to have all sorts of PA and sound systems and lighting systems and all oh, sorts amazing. of stuff. I mean, amazing. a lot of stuff, touring, uh, a mm -hmm. lot of stuff. But, no, I haven't. It, it has crossed my mind, but I, I would have to really research because that's an art, in it, another art in itself, guitar making, Luth a luthier. I think it's called the word, yeah. a luthier. Um, mm. And there's somebody I follow, Crimson Guitars. Check him out, his videos. Crimson, Crimson. Crimson, Crimson Guitars. guitars. He, he makes and he YouTubes. He's an amazing guitar maker. Just a great, great bloke. And looks brilliant. He, he's looked brilliant on camera. I've never yeah. actually met him. Yeah. But he doesn't live very far from me. And uh, But he shows how to make guitars. Oh, and uh, he's yeah, absolutely... Brilliant. I'm trying to think what his channel's called. Uh, it's Crimson Guitars is, is his actually company. And I'm not 100% sure what his YouTube channel is. Well, if you find but, out, Mark, before I put this video out, I'll put it in the link below as well, yeah? Because I was going to... I was going yeah, to if anyone's quite it. interested in looking, in, in learning how to make guitars, I mean, he's mm. just, he's he's just, for me, he's the dawn. You know, he's, yeah, he's the man. Cool. Yeah, of course. Cool. And, 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 and so... If you remember who he is, let me know, and we'll put it. We'll put it in the the video description. I've, let me know, perfect. That's one of the questions. If you've got any, what do you want to recommend? Any YouTubers you've been watching recently? And uh, there we go. A few, a few other questions for you. Um, so, what's your what's your go to favorite tool at the moment? Power tool, hand tool, whatever. <laughs> what the one that I I sort of buy a tool and I think, oh, that's the one. I'm going to find any project I can use that tool with. I will do. So, what's yours? Yeah. Have you? I mean, mine was the uh, uh, the cheapo router actually for a while. For a while, I tell you what's almost indispensable, um, and this will be a really boring tool, but I would, I've, and I might do a video on it myself. Oh, really? Okay. It is. Oh, yeah. Hang on. These, when you're working, hang on. This is an old knackered one, though. Yeah, I've got a lot of these. I've got a lot of clamps, but okay. these on a job. There you go. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Irwin. Right, you you can build anything because these become your second, third, fourth person. Of course, you just clamp it, and then you go the other end. It's still there. And yeah. it's been drying. Oh, it's falling down. Oh, it's oh no. And then you swear it. You you yeah. you you're throwing things because you just can't do it. You get a few of these. Just go to any tool station, any screw fix, other. Tool merchants are available. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's right. there's plenty to choose from. Amazon's a fairly good choice at the minute. Amazon, you know, you, there's there. lots of places you can buy these mm. things. Uh, that sounds really boring. <laughs> I've got lots of amazing power tools now, and I'm a big Dewalt uh, because I've got. Oh, you're a Dewalt, Dewalt fanboy now, yeah. I am a Dewalt fanboy, but it was about picking a battery system because that's you. If you uh, if you've got lots of different yeah. batteries, 
then that's silly because you end up having to buy a battery for everything. Whereas exactly. you it, it makes sense to choose your system, choose mm -hmm. the one you go for, and then stick to it primarily because then all the because all the everything's interchangeable. Yeah, I must say that I've not built my uh, tool collection up enough yet to go battery powered. I am doing soon, so I am looking for ideas. Yeah, I got a lot. I they're all up here. They're, most of them are up here in all their cases. I've even, you know, I've got some really nice nailers, nail guns. I've got two. Yeah, yeah, oh, electric, uh, electric, uh, battery powered. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you go. Look, these, these, uh, oh, you have gone to town. Hey, you know, I in the <laughs> <laughs> so, are they like the Paslos? Pardon? Are they like yes, the Paslos? Well, these are battery. So, you just stick your, uh, I've got some batteries up here. This is where my batteries. So, you just bang your battery yeah. in, and then you're good to go. I mean, this one, this is a framing nailer. Yeah. And this is, so that's, uh, their first and second fix. So yeah, they've got yeah. different powers and they've got different uses. So mm -hmm. this one much smaller, Brad's for second fix. So you could do this for skirting board. I mean, cool. I use this for fencing and and really, um, there's a video coming out that you'll see it for the first time because I haven't actually had these that long. Right, I knew yeah. I was going to get them, but yeah, I've got a lot of uh, well, spent well, a lot of money. I know, that's <laughs> don't tell don't the tell wife. Don't tell the wife. <laughs> don't, just, don't let us see the video. <laughs> Don't let her open your credit card bills payments, yeah. <laughs> what's your what's your oldest tool? You, you, you must have an old tool that's either sentimental. Yes, yes or... I have and it's my go-to. It's one of my squares. It's a square right. and I um it's just an old fashioned I've had it since I was a boy. It's still the test of time and it's still square and all that lot. Yeah, don't make it. And I could get a really new there's some amazing fancy squares, but I'm I'm, I'm still I'm a bit of a sentimental old fool as well, you know. There, 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 there's that part of me. Yeah. <laughs> and it was there when I was working with my dad and my granddad, and my granddad taught me, mm -hmm. taught me how to do basic skills and and my dad. And you know, you know, my dad has has passed that they're all more well, granted obviously a long time ago but my dad uh back 10 years ago so he doesn't know any of this obviously and it, looking down from above brilliant mm. so i do yeah. say so i it, it he would be so he'd be in here all right boy i said oh god i love this oh go on old boy because yeah, <laughs> he, he was a Suffolk boy yeah. so he was from lower so uh yeah. he'd be in his suffolk uh, uh east anglian sort of accent yeah yeah of course and, very uh, broad. He, he'd, very be, broad. he'd be he'd be Super like, yeah, yeah. This is awesome. Yeah, I love, this, love this. And I mean, who doesn't like a workshop? I say men, but women as well. Who doesn't like a workshop? You can just oh. go where you can put it. And this was always the thing. Before I had one, I used to have a little shed. He's put all my tools in there in a toolbox. And you can put a toolbox under the stairs in a cupboard somewhere, and it's out of the way. You've got to get it out. There's nothing better. If you can go into a space, no matter how big it is, and you're halfway through a project and just leave it and go yeah. in. For your supper or going go to bed come back two days later and it's still there waiting for you yeah yeah people haven't got the resources to um have a, have a little workshop or whatever but if you just get a small i mean I, the first shed i got in my back garden cost me 50 quid off uh gum tree i think it was needed a bit yeah. of work doing to it chipped it in here painted it or put a bit of felt on the roof and there you go that's it done you're 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 ready to go and then just build up your tool collection starting from scratch and mm -hmm. Yeah, and and it's, like I say, there's nothing better than to be able to leave something and go away and come back to it. And it's exactly what it was when you left it, rather than packing yeah. it away. It's in the garden. It starts raining or whatever. But each their own. If you can work under a, a, a I don't know, a tarpaulin or a gazebo, I've done that before. I worked on motorbikes many times under under yeah. gazebos yeah. and and whatever. Yeah. Great, Mark. We've been going now for quite a while. Um, it's been great having you on. You're the first person on Sheddies. I don't know if that's an honor or what, because <laughs> yeah, we might, this might be edited to death. So uh, we don't know what it's going to turn out, but you're the first one on. Look, mate, it's been great to have you on here. First one. It's been an absolute uh, pleasure, Rob. Um, and thank you for having me. Thank you. It's been a, an absolute pleasure. And I look forward to seeing more and seeing where it goes as well. And we, and you know, exactly. wish you and everyone out there success. Follow your dreams. No matter how old you are, no matter what you've done in life, follow your dreams you can still do what you want to do i couldn't say it better myself mate spot on now i normally end a video by going cheers to the camera you've got a little uh 
thing, haven't you? Where you uh, yes. How do you end your videos? I'll end oh, it on okay, that. So from me, Mark, at the Small Workshop Adventures. Take care, everybody. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't do the start either, did you? You didn't go. No, I didn't. Hello, YouTube. Was it hello, YouTube land? <laughs> hello, YouTube land. Welcome That's back it. to the Small Workshop <laughs> Adventures. <laughs> I didn't do that. Hey, I've just oh. noted. I am press record. You have. <laughs> you little. <laughs> you little. <sh> <laughs> that whole lot. I thought I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I've got record on here. I've got record on there. I've got record on here. Right. Yeah, I just have a press mate. record. <laughs> that was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I think I am. Hold on to you, mate. So that was Mark from the Small Workshop Adventures. I'm sure you agree what a proper character he is. And uh, Mark, thanks very much for appearing on here. That's uh, it's absolutely marvellous. As I say, again, this is my first time doing this, so please excuse the way it's, I, I could have thought of a, a thousand other questions for Mark, and I could, it could have gone for hours. But I wanted to make it short and sweet, just to give you a taste of what, what, what I'm sort of planning for this shed is. And uh, Mark, thanks for being my guinea pig. <laughs> Again, if you've got some space, a workshop, man cave, whatever, get in touch, weekendshedhead at yahoo.com. And you may know somebody else who's got one, a friend of yours, send him this video, share this video, that'd be great. It's not a formal chat by any stretch of the imagination. It's just a load of waffle, just a load of uh, chewing the fat. Some of you might find it interesting, some might not, but some of you may like that style of video. Hope you do. I'm always interested in other people's spaces and what ideas they've got. So I'm hoping this series will show me and you um, what ideas other people have got. So why don't you pop over to Mark's channel, see what he's all about, watch his series on the garden room build. We've got some other projects on there as well. Um, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, subscribe and uh, put a comment below. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Take care. Cheers.